Hi Pisces and Pisces rising, here's your horoscope for August 2024. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. Okay, this is going to be a huge month. We have so much energy coming in that it can be overwhelming at times. So I'm just going to warn you guys ahead of time. This is not to be pessimistic or you know negative in any way, but any astrologer will tell you, wow, do we have some heavy alignments coming in this month. So what does that mean for you folks? So this reading's for anyone who has a Pisces rising or you have the sun in Pisces. This is a general sun sign, Western astrology, tropical reading using whole house systems because I don't have everybody's birthday and everyone's birthday is completely different and everyone's chart is completely different, okay? So what we have this month is we have Saturn that's going retrograde in your house. We have your ruler that's retrograde in your house. We have Pluto that's retrograde in the 12th house. But all the activity this month seems to involve Uranus. It has to do with Mars and Jupiter. Jupiter is your co-ruler. And of course, things pertaining to your job or health or well-being. These are the general themes. Around the 19th of the month, we have a very strong full moon in Aquarius. And so this is some sort of realization or some sort of understanding about your health or well-being or maybe someone in your life or a pet or somebody close to you that you will be dealing with. Okay, so there's definitely partnership issues in the mix this month. So be careful of you know getting into arguments or heated discussions or some sort of family dynamics that goes sideways real fast and so you got a you got a warning you got a heads up now so prepare for what's coming okay and of course there is that outside possibility that something to do with the economy or the political theater starts to heat up or you know military nonsense going on that could also be in the picture this month as well so we'll have to see how it unfolds okay i'm doing these videos in the middle of july and so um you know we we don't know exactly what's going to take place uh in august so let's dive in and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay so as we start off the month we have the new moon in leo on the fourth right here in your sixth house of health service routine job and so if you're looking for a new job or you're looking to go back to something you used to do or maybe you're thinking about uh, taking care of your health in a better way or maybe you're taking care of someone else's health this new moon is going to open up that doorway for all that it's going to be at 12 degrees of leo so wherever that is in your birth chart that's the area you need to pay attention to okay so it's going to be favorably aspected to mars and jupiter in your fourth house so maybe you're thinking about remodeling maybe you're thinking about taking in a roommate maybe you're doing something at home uh, maybe you're buying uh, a new house maybe you're buying land i don't know but something uh, looks very favorable here as we begin the month and so this uh, could be promising okay so uh, by the way um, speaking of moon I have this over here that I found online that I think many of you might be interested in it's a free mini reading from this company and um, you know and it's pretty accurate and I, I actually bought the report and everything and uh, if you're interested in finding out what your moon sign says about you, check it out. Of course, they're going to try and upsell you, but that's totally up to you if you want it or not. But uh, I thought this was interesting and I figured I'd uh, share the link and it's down below in the description. OK, so here we have this full optimistic full moon, uh, you create a full moon, full moon. But right away, a little bit while a little bit later after the fourth into the fifth, Venus goes into Virgo right there now virgo is your opposite sign and so it's going to enter the seventh house of relationships and partners and all kinds of business endeavors with other people and so on and so forth but it quickly gets an alignment to pluto here see this will be at zero degrees this is going to be at zero degrees so we have an in conjunct here with a relationship dynamic that's not doing too well so you're starting off even though we have the optimistic new moon in um leo this 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 venus going into virgo is not the greatest because it makes an alignment to pluto but also if you look above here we have mercury in stationary position getting ready to go retrograde as well so we've got these two dynamics here that are a bit tricky as we continue on in the month so we have the energy starting to build a little bit okay and so you need to pay attention because this has a lot to do with other people 
Now, uh, there's the the, uh, the Mercury retrograde that I talked about, but here is where the energy really starts to get intense. Mars conjunct Jupiter in Gemini on the 14th. There it is right there. There's Mars, there's Jupiter. They're at 16 degrees of the sign and they're in Gemini. So the fourth house has to do with your home, your feelings, and your foundation. And these two signs here are being amped up even more. So your mind is thinking, you're processing, what the hell's going on? What am I doing? Maybe you're dealing with family members. Maybe you're dealing with roommates. Maybe you're dealing with a loved one in your house and they're kind of losing their grip on reality or they don't know what the hell's going on. And so there is a little bit of chaos coming in here and overthinking in a big way. But the reason that is, is because, not just because these planets are in Gemini, but they're making an aspect to, to Saturn right here in your sign, 17 degrees, 16 degrees. This is what's called a square in astrology. And it's symbolized by that little, those little red ones there. And there's the symbol of the square. This is a challenging aspect. And so there is definitely some pressure or unrealistic expectations or, you know, uh, communication of some kind that, that is off the charts that you're having to deal with. And again, it could be a roommate, a family member or anyone else close to you. But when we look at the other aspect here, Venus is coming into a square as well at an opposition. So this is considered a T-square. And this is a lot of pressure. This is heaviness. This is like, oh my God, what the hell's happening kind of energy. And we also have the transiting moon that is also going to be opposing this, creating what we call a grand cross. And so in astrology, a grand cross is a lot of heavy energy. So prepare yourself, Pisces and Pisces rising. Don't take it personally, like it's only happening to you, okay? You're one of the signs that loves to take everything personally and, and feel sorry for itself. Don't do that, okay? Because the er energy is going to be really heavy and everyone's going to be feeling it, okay? On the 15th, we have Mercury backtracking into Leo right there. Now, this is not really going to help much because um, this is about revisiting the past. Anytime we have Mercury in retrograde, it's about revisiting the past. And so it's going backwards. The Sun and Mercury are going to meet up in the sixth house. So it has a lot to do with health and your, your daily routine and service to others, your pets, whatever it is that you have going on, it's going to highlight all that. The other thing that it makes it a little more difficult is that 29 degrees Neptune, your ruler is at 29 degrees of Pisces. So now we have another unrealistic expectations, fantasy prone. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. You know, that kind of mindset is very possible here. And if it's not you, it could be somebody else in your life that you're close to. We also have a square going on to uh, Uranus at 27 degrees. So we have two aspects to this backward motion uh, Mercury that can be challenging. So from the 14th on, the energy is off the charts beginning that time. So, but the real big energy is coming in on the 18th and 19th, beginning with this full moon in Aquarius. So here's the full moon. It's going to be right in the 12th house. It's going to be at 27 degrees of Aquarius. And the sun will be at 27 degrees of Aquarius and uh, Mercury will be at 26 degrees. So something from the past or something that you've been dealing with is going to irritate the hell out of you. And there's going to be a lot of conversation about it. Maybe a need to end something, a relationship, a job, a situation, uh, a disconnect from someone or a situation that no longer belongs in your life because it'll also be squaring Uranus. So it's full of surprises. And so now we have a T-square that's direct at 27 degrees. It'll actually be direct exactly on the 19th. I had to use the 18th in order to get this, the, these alignments, um, you know, with the moon in Aquarius to show a moon in Aquarius. And so here we see some tremendous amount of energy coming in here that's going to be very tricky. And so um, what I'm seeing is... Uh, very much heavy, heavy energy that is very unstable. And it's going to put a little pressure on you. And you're going to be like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? What am I doing here? This is uh, unbelievable amounts of energy. Again, don't take it personally like it's only happening to you. But at the same time, that's all happening. Venus is square Jupiter as well. Here's Venus, relationships. And it's squaring Jupiter, the home life, the family life, the, the foundation. 
So we're seeing some more stress uh, being built up here. And then on top of that, we have Jupiter squaring Saturn in your first house. We have another T-square that's developing. So we, this one's exact too at 17 degrees, as you can see here. Another T-square on top of another T-square. So this is tremendous amounts of energy that's coming in here that is very unstable. So we have the full moon and we have two T-squares coming in on the 19th. This is, uh, you know, it's just a hot mess. I'm sorry to have to say this. And so if you could avoid making any major life-changing decisions, I would suggest it. But if you can't, then you got to go with the flow and make the changes, okay? But this, this is a lot of pressure, all right? So just be mindful of that. On the 22nd, the sun enters Virgo. Now, this will help you with uh, clarity and communication with other people. And, um, you know, you're wanting to talk, you're wanting to share your insights. Um, you know, maybe someone's coming to you to listen to what you have to say. But this, this sun will all be in conjuncting or quinconuxing Pluto as well. So whatever it is, it's not over yet. You know, the relationship situation or the dynamics that are at play here, they don't seem to be resolved yet. Uh, and so there's uh, at least this is a little easier energy as it goes through the seventh house And so there's a lot of communication with other people or a need to communicate with other people to see what's going on here Now mercury goes direct in Leo on the 28th right there This will start moving forward again and eventually will move into the seventh house So you might get a little bit of clarity going on and resolving towards the end of the month as mercury makes its way out of the sixth house now venus enters libra on the 29th and 30th right there so we're back to relationships we're back to talking about relationships and what needs to happen maybe somebody's moving out of your house maybe somebody's leaving your life in some way uh you know there's definitely a dynamic of relationships here that is really highlighted for many of you so we'll have to see how it plays itself out but this is definitely tricky energy that's coming in pisces so do the best you can um, you know, this, this energy is going to affect everyone. So anyway, there you have it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about astrology, uh, check out this video I have at the end of this presentation about my private community and uh, do the best you can. And I will talk to you folks soon. Bye for now. Hi, thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques, such as progressions, solar returns, how to, how to read transits, how to make predictions. It's all there in this course here. And I even dive into some of the mysterious stuff, you know, what some of the symbolism is all about. So I think you might want to check it out if you're interested. Along with the course, we have a very tight-knit community here where everyone helps each other out. And so if someone knows a lot about astrology, they help other people with astrology. So it's a community that really gets involved and, you know, really wants to learn and help each other out. But as you can see here, I have a whole lot more on this uh, private community. Uh, I also have the Inner Circle live calls each week. Now, this is something that I do twice a month on YouTube, but here I do them on a weekly basis. And I talk about various topics. You get to ask me questions, we interact, and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology. So this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world, predictions, politics, whatever it is, we talk about it in the Inner Circle Calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube, so you get the, you get uh, those too. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books suggested reading, meditations, and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.